In this tutorial, we are going to give you an overview of volumes and snapshots in FreeNIOS 9215. We'll be setting up a ZFS volume and dataset and teaching you about the different possible volume layouts such as stripes, mirrors, RAID Z, RAID Z2, etc. In addition, we'll be creating ZFS snapshots. First, we'll be setting up storage on FreeNIOS. Click storage on the top menu. There are two options to add a volume, ZFS Volume Manager and UFS Volume Manager. ZFS stands for Zetabyte File System and UFS stands for Unix File System. Since many FreeNAS features will only work with ZFS, you should only use UFS if you have a specific reason or hardware that cannot handle ZFS, such as less than 4 to 8 gigabytes of system memory. We'll be taking a look at the ZFS file system in this tutorial. ZFS requires at least 4 gigabytes of RAM to function and 6 gigabytes to run smoothly. At least 8 gigabytes of RAM is recommended for the best performance. Also, if you want to use plugins, ZFS is required. Click ZFS Volume Manager. Give the volume a name. I'll call this one Your Volume. Click plus to add all available disks to this volume. This only works if all your disks are identical. I am currently on the new FreeNAS Mini, and there are four 1TB drives in this machine. FreeNAS will automatically choose an ideal RAID type for the number of disks you have. In this case, it shows a stripe of ZFS mirrors, which is like RAID 10. In RAID terminology, the mirror is a group of disks in which all the disks have the same data. In this setup, there are two separate mirrors being striped together, meaning that the data for the file system is distributed evenly between the pairs. This setup has excellent performance and data protection, but you only get to use half of the maximum capacity of the disk. Another option here is Stripe. Stripe will use the maximum capacity of your disk space, however, it is not ideal for redundancy. If one drive goes out in this setup, your entire volume will go out with it, and that means your data will be gone. Let's say I want to use more of the maximum capacity of my disks while still having protection. In this case, I would want to use RAID Z. To set up RAID Z, click on the slider button on the bottom right. Drag it up so the disks are in a single RAID group and all the way to the right. I'll then change the setting on the left to RAID Z. RAID Z is like RAID 5 in that it spreads the RAID recovery or parity information across all the disks, which reduces the maximum capacity of the group by one disk. FreeNAS will warn me that this is not an ideal configuration. ZFS performs best when you use groups of disks that are powers of 2 plus to level of RAID protection. So in this case, 5 total drives will be ideal. However, at such a low disk count, the performance difference is barely noticeable. RAID Z2 works the same way as RAID Z except that 2 drives will be used for parity, which is considered a more optimal setting in that the groups of disks are powers of 2 plus to level of RAID protection. However, this will have worse performance than RAID Z because you have more of the space dedicated to parity instead of actual data. You will also lose capacity since another disk will be devoted to parity. The other options you can choose are not necessary unless you know you need them. They are the log device or read cache device. Now that I've selected my RAID level, I'll click add volume and wait for the volume to be created. And you can see that your volume has been added to this list. For this next step, we'll be creating a ZFS dataset. A ZFS dataset is like an advanced folder system inside your volume. With a dataset, you can do things like have different compression settings, deduplication settings, or quota settings. These settings can be applied separately from the rest of the file systems. Select the volume on the list. On the bottom menu, click Create ZFS Dataset. Give your dataset a name. I'll call mine Your Dataset. If you click Advanced Mode, you can input a quota for this specific dataset. When you're done, click Add Dataset. Next, we'll be setting permissions. Setting permissions on your volume or dataset will allow specific groups or users to access your folders and files. Select a dataset or volume on the list. On the bottom menu, click Change Permissions. Here you can give read, write, or execute access to the owner, a certain group, or other. Check in the boxes that you need. ACL stands for Access Control List. You should choose the ACL representative of the type of share you plan to make. For example, even though I plan to share with PCBSD, I'll be using a SIF share, so I would choose the Windows slash Mac option. Only use Unix permissions if you plan to use NFS shares or no shares at all. If you want to set the same permissions for old files already on your dataset, check the Set Permission Recursively box, and click Change when you are done. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a ZFS snapshot. A snapshot basically saves your data exactly as it was during the exact time you took the snapshot. 
select the volume from the volume list. Click create snapshot on the bottom. Go ahead and give it a name, then click manually create snapshot. Now I'm going to show you how to restore your volume to that snapshot. Before you go ahead and do this step, note that doing so permanently deletes all of the non-snapshotted data added after that snapshot. Click ZFS snapshots next to active volumes. Under Available Actions on the right side, click Rollback Snapshot on the snapshot you want to roll back to. Click Yes if you are sure you want to do this. You can also take snapshots of specific datasets instead of the whole volume. This works the same way otherwise. An alternative is to clone the snapshot if you need to retrieve old data, but don't need to undo all changes since the snapshot. This takes up more space, but that can be temporary if you delete the clone dataset once you're done retrieving data. In the ZFS Snapshots tab, under Available Actions, on the snapshot you would like to clone, click Clone Snapshot. Give it a name, then click Clone Snapshot. It should appear in the Active Volumes tab, under the volume that you made the snapshot for. When you clone the snapshot, it basically creates a dataset that copies what the snapshot of the volume or dataset contained. Another way to take snapshots is to do it automatically. Click Periodic Snapshot Tasks. Then click Add Periodic Snapshot. Choose the lifetime and frequency of the snapshots. Then click OK. Wait for a little bit. Go to ZFS Snapshots. You should see an entry with the word Auto in the snapshot name. In this instance, they will be created every hour from 9am to 6pm, Monday through Friday. They have a lifetime of 2 weeks before they are deleted automatically. That concludes this tutorial on Freenas 9215 Volumes Overview. Be sure to check out other tutorials coming soon. This video was made possible by iX Systems, the sponsor and developer of the Freenas project. Many people have asked, how can they support the Freenas project? For those interested, we offer a wide range of storage products that leverage Freenas. For enterprise customers that need high availability and 24-7 support, we have TrueNAS. For business customers that need powerful and rock-solid FreeNAS storage, we offer FreeNAS Certified Storage. For home and small office use, we offer the FreeNAS Mini. For more information, visit ixsystems.com storage.